It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you grow your e-commerce business faster and more efficiently by cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and guidance from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello, Master Plan World. Welcome to our latest podcast. In fact, our first interview podcast of 2016. And it's a great pleasure to have you all listening. I'm Chloe Thomas, the creator of the e-commerce Master Plan, author, speaker and consultant, and I focus on e-commerce business strategy and marketing. I'd like to introduce you to today's special guest. Ian Smith is in the process of creating an online butchers called Taste Tradition Direct. As we record this interview, we're in month three of the business and they've already hit an average 50 orders per month. He's building it as the online business to consumer side of taste tradition, which is an award winning wholesale farmers and butchers who specialise in rare breed meats with an amazing reputation with the UK's top chefs. Hi, Ian. It's great to have you on the show. I've just given our listeners a very quick overview of you and your business and where you are now. So how did you get started in e-commerce? Um, okay, hi Chloe. It's um, it's good to be here. This, the butchery side of things. I grew up in a butcher's shop in the Yorkshire Dales. My father was a butcher in the kind of seventies and eighties, and then left and went off to university. Thought I knew better. Started <laughs> went into the media business. Ended up creating um, music videos and that kind of thing, which eventually led me into um, through a process of different things into digital marketing, um, and into representing food clients, which kind of took me full circle. One of those clients was a company called Taste Tradition, um, who I started working with about a year ago. And it kind of, it, it reignited this, this kind of passion for um, good quality food and, and rare breed meats. And it kind of ticked all the boxes for me. And they were essentially supplying mainly into the wholesale market. Um, and I thought there was an opportunity there to go direct to consumers. Um, it, it fit with my kind of aims to have my own uh, part of an e-commerce business. Um, so we got together and created this this thing, Taste Tradition Direct. So Ian, it's kind of been what some might see as, as an obvious fact that you ended up in e-commerce, but at the same time, it's been quite a roundabout way of getting there. I'm going to the age now where I wanted to build, to build something that that was not just reliant on me. And the obvious thing for me was e-commerce. Um, but the difficult thing was finding something that had um, the brand and the potential um, and something that had something a bit unique, which is is what Taste Tradition have in that they are probably fairly unique in that there are farmers and the butchers and all in one business with a, a really good reputation and a really good brand. It's a good place to start with a direct to consumer model, isn't it? And e-commerce is clearly the right the right angle to go through, go down. And I like that you know like you're saying like, I I knew I wanted to do e-commerce. It was just trying to find the right opportunity. And I think that's something which which we underestimate is that the although that you know running e-commerce is very difficult or not very difficult, but it's not straightforward. And building an e-commerce business is not straightforward. Actually. For the majority of people, the most difficult thing is the idea. Absolutely, yeah. And and another big hurdle, if you don't know what you're doing um, on the technical side and on the, on the website side, there's quite an investment of time and energy and pay, if you can't do it yourself, paying somebody else to do it. Um, I have an awful lot of clients who say to me, we'd like to start going into e-commerce and they think it's a magic bullet. Yes, it's... it's um. <laughs> It's very much the case. You can't just put a website live and expect to become a millionaire. There's an awful lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and marketing that goes into making it making it there. But let's um let's just fill in a few of the details about your business as it stands right now. You're in the UK, and are you selling UK only, or are you selling overseas at the moment? It, it's UK only, and um, yeah, we're based in North Yorkshire. The the, the the original taste tradition business was founded by Charles Ashbridge, a farmer. He saw that there was a, a gap for native breed sheep, cattle, um, pigs, etc., and and that's where he started from, really. And it was this idea of the fact that native native breeds grow slowly, um, so they're not as commercially viable as the crossbreeds that you normally get. Um, but the flavour and the product is considerably uh, superior. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so so if the if a consumer wants the ultimate steak, 
you're the place to come to to get it. Absolutely, yeah. And cool. That's so, cool. so, sorry, I was just going to say, yeah. that's built on a reputation of supplying chefs, you know, who are extremely picky, you know. <laughs> and, you know, everything has to be exactly right for them or it comes back through the door. Um, which means you can build a customer service then, you know, once, you, once you're confident in what you've got. And so what, um, you know, you said customer service is important. So what's the team like at the moment on the consumer side, on the e-commerce side of the business? Is it just you? There's me. Well, there's Charles, who's the farmer. He's the farmer side of the business. Um, there's James, who's the uh, head butcher. So he's the butcher side of the business. Um, there's myself, who um, I can tend to look after the branding and the marketing and customer service. Um, and there's a chap called Rob in the office who does all the logistics. And if somebody's parcel's not delivered, he's the man who tells them why and makes sure it's sorted out, and which was critical, obviously, at Christmas. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's quite a lean, really, you're just using resources that already exist within the wholesale business at the moment. Exactly. Yeah, exactly that. And um, my job is, is really to not detract from that business, um, but to use the, you know, the experts that we've got um, as much as we can. So on the website, we have this thing called Ask the Farmer, you know, and if somebody wants to know something that's a technical question regarding the, the kind of upbringing of the animals, then that goes to Charles and he answers it. Um, and then we've got Ask the Butcher, which goes to James, the head butcher, and he, asks, and he answers that. So it's very much this thing of, of trying to be almost like going back to my father being a butcher in the 70s and 80s, there was there was this kind of um, expertise there that if somebody wanted to know something, it could be answered. And yeah. That's what we want to try and get across on the e-commerce side is that if a customer wants to know how to cook a particular thing or they want to know which breed of animal it was that, you know, the, that they got in the post, you know, um, all those things, or if they want the meat preparing in this particular way, you know, if they, if they want the roast to be French trimmed, then they can ask for that and, and that will happen. And I, I like both that customer service element in its truest sense that you're bringing to the pie. I also like the fact that, that you're, you're using the, the strategic benefit that bolting e-commerce into an existing successful business gives you both on the you know the product is tried and tested the reputation is there the brand is there so you're you know piggybacking on that but you're also making good use of the resources you've got so you're going right this is the this is what we've got within the team let's see how far we can get with what we've got and then we'll find where the pain points are and where the issues are with our system so we know who we need to recruit next or what we need to outsource next. And I think, you know, for anyone out there, and I, you know, I get emails quite regularly from people who are either wholesalers or they're retail looking to jump into the, the online retail space. That really is two, two key principles to, to be aware of is that you're piggybacking on two of those strategic pieces of the pie. So given your piggybacking on existing resources, which platform did you choose to sell on? We went straight away for um, WooCommerce purely because um, my experience is, is, with, is with WordPress. Um, and we have our own installs of WordPress. Um, and WooCommerce is something I've used quite a lot. And it's something that, that happens quickly. You know, it's there very quickly in, in its, its like kind of natural form without too much tweaking and too much work. Um, and there are an awful lot of plugins available for it. Um, all of which, unfortunately, have a license fee attached. <laughs> so which ones of those plugins have you gone for so far? I know you're only three months in, so I'm guessing not that many of them yet? No, not too many. We've gone for all the kind of basic ones that help me to get um, feedback and statistics. So we've gone for things like there's an abandoned cart plugin that tells me who in the last few days has abandoned their cart and... Um, obviously it gives me the ability to contact them if I want to, which, which I haven't done so far. Um, but it just gives us that um, that knowledge of, of where people are abandoning and, and, and why. Um, I think it may be the same plugin, but attached to that is something that shows me when somebody has made an order, it shows me the path that they took through the website to from entering to get into that order. Um, and it shows me how many visits um, 
they made before ordering. So that's a nice, useful sort of analysis thing to look at and to try and tweak in the journey, you know, people through the site. Um, but yeah, I, I, WooCommerce, I think, for somebody who um, hasn't got that much knowledge of the technical side of e-commerce is probably a, a pretty good starting point. There is a lot to be said for starting with something simple because it stops you from spending too much time focusing on unimportant details <laughs> as you can do with the larger, more complex sites whilst you've only got that small small volume of, of people coming through and it, you get to foc- it encourages you to focus on the things which are going to make or break your business which is the product the uh, the transactions the orders retailing essentially yes absolutely and i think I, I think a lot of people forget that you know that at the at the end of the day there has to be some kind of personality behind it you know whether that's whether that's a brand and, and there's a vision for the brand or whatever it is but there has to be some consistency um, and I think the main thing is to is to build trust you know and, and for people to have confidence that that what they're buying they're going to get um, and if you don't have a recognized brand that's that's quite a difficult thing to achieve and, and the, the only way you achieve it is by making the website look and act in a credible way really um, and obviously, if, once you've got customers, is by um, testimonials. You know? um, yeah. Okay, so I'm. That's given us a really good, good, uh, Im- good idea of where you're at at the moment. So, what do you think, Ian, is the most awesome thing in your business right at the moment? The, the thing that I get excited about is is, is transferring the, the kind of reputation and the brand that that the business has amongst the catering industry and, and, and chefs um, and transferring that into a consumer brand. Um, that's something that really kind of floats my boat. And, and the whole customer service thing that we talked about of, of, of just bending over backwards to do whatever somebody needs doing. Um, so you, you mentioned earlier um, about, you know, aiming for those testimonials. So I'm guessing part of transferring that brand equity from the wholesale to the consumer side is going to be about great customer service and also get testimonials. But of course, that gets to be a bit chicken and eggs. So you've got to get the customers there first. So are there any, you know, you've got a couple of tips for our listeners who are thinking about doing the same thing of, of other areas you've been focused on? Got, I mean, to be honest, we started in November and we went straight in, you know, we added some key products. There's, there's lots of products that we do that aren't even on the site yet. But we wanted to... So you so you started with a smaller product base to test it as well? Yeah. We, we started with what we oh. thought were the kind of key products that people would be looking for for Christmas. You know, um, And to be honest, Taste Tradition as a wholesale business is figures very highly on keywords like porchetta um, and suckling pig, which are a kind of fairly um, niche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> so we use that to pass from the Taste Tradition um, brand site into the new e-commerce site. Um, we use that as something to get new customers in, and, and it worked. You know, So we were getting people coming in to order porchetta or something. And once they're in there, they're looking at the fact that we've got four ribs of beef and um, we've got beer-fed Dexter, which is a a breed of cattle that's fed nice. on beer <laughs> so it's a kind of tribute to the japanese kobe beef um and so that once people are in there um and looking at that kind of thing then they, they started to put their orders in you know and so so to transfer that that brand equity you've literally gone they're going to see they're going to end up on the the b2b site anyway the wholesale site anyway so let's just make sure we've got the links to make it really obvious that if they're a consumer and have ended up there we can still help them that's right yeah okay cool and then um is there any other other bits and pieces i guess you you spent some time and effort making sure the product pages were good on the e-commerce side site yeah i mean we're still doing it and i'm writing an awful lot of stuff but (laughs) (laughs) But we're doing with things like cooking guides, you know, how to roast them. What we aimed to do was to try and take out any questions that they had, like what size of oven would it need to fit, you know, and what's the best way to cook it, and 
could it be frozen if they didn't use all of it? And all those kind of questions that, that we imagine people would ask, we tried to answer beforehand. And I guess you're, you're in the nice position where actually there's no argument about whether that information should be on the B2B site or the B2C site, because you'd be, you'd be teaching the, uh, the chefs to suck eggs, which they're not going to appreciate over on the wholesale side if you put that copy there. Yeah, so that copy that's... naturally gets to be on the e-commerce side. That's right. I mean, they don't like to admit that they don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. They may well be reading it, but at least now they can pretend they don't. They didn't need need to know about it. So, so just to summarise, then your tips of getting that brand um, equity really to transfer from the B two B business, the wholesale business, into the B two C e commerce business was um, to do to to maintain customer service levels and use the knowledge within the business to get great testimonials and happy customers. Was to write great. FAQs and how to cook and information about those products. Limit the products you're offering so that you can create a good experience around them and you're picking the ones that fit for the season. And then finally, to take links from the the B2B, the wholesale site on those key products through to the e-commerce site because that's uh, the, the wholesale site is going to be the one that people end up on through the natural SEO-ness of things. It is. Right? Okay, right. cool. In which case, just because I, I want to keep us moving on here. So what's on your to-do list at the moment? What's on the radar, Ian? There are two kind of key things. One is everybody seems to do a meat box. You know, all the different online butchers seem to do meat boxes. So you get a particular joint and some, and some mints and some burgers and whatever it might be. What we're trying to do is to make those boxes so they're, um, so they're customizable. So Somebody opts in to buy a, a basic box, but we want we want them to be able to do is to go through a form where they actually tell us what they would like in that box, or if they want to add anything additionally to it. Um, and then hopefully an extension of that is to make that into something that I know you're keen on, which is a, a subscription style. Yeah. I think I, oh, I think that you're going to have a lot of fun trying to both trying to get the tech working on that customizable box and also the usability of it, because um, that I imagine that that could be a bit of a nightmare. So is that that's the primary thing on the to do list? It is, yeah. And and the other thing is is again going back to the traditional butchers thing is to is to have an option for somebody to order a whole um, a whole lamb or or half a pig or whatever to go through a form that asks them how they would like the various cuts to be. The kind of holy grail in, in the butchery business is to find a way to use everything. To find yeah. And it's a big trend now as well, trying to use everything, isn't it? It is, yeah. And it's a great economical way to do it. It's a fairly long form that somebody goes through. But at the end of the day, having done it, we, we then know exactly what they want. And if they want to reorder, they can have the same thing again. A really key question, I think, because I think people will have realised as we're going through this, you've only been live for three months. You've, um, you've gone for like the simplest method. You've gone for um, the WooCommerce option because you know about it. And it's, it's a simple site that gets you up there quite quickly. You've clearly got some quite complex items on the to-do list at the moment. You're focusing on the customer first. So I'm guessing to have got to where you've got in three months while still achieving some really big pieces, you must have taken quite an interesting approach, you know, strategic approach to how you were going to be doing this project. I guess so, yeah. I, I mean, my my thing, I can't remember which which guru came up with it, but, but one of the things is kind of get it wrong quickly. It's the internet. So if we do something and it's wrong, we can change it quickly. It's not like we've got a three-month a three print run. Or, yeah. We can test things. We can do things. If they don't work, we can change them very quickly. So so that's kind of what we've done. But there is some strategy behind it, yeah. And and the key thing really was for us to, to, to use that Christmas space where we knew that there would be big volumes coming through or relatively big volumes um, to try and find some patterns and, and to find what people thought and how they reacted. Um, so now in the next three months, it's a case of, We've got to build on that. We've got to build on what people are asking for and what people want, and, and, and try and match that. You know, and at the same time, we've got we've got a lot of influencers on the um, wholesale side of the business that, that we can use. 
but we don't want to bring them in until we've got everything, <laughs> all the products there that we want to be there. Um, I, I like that. You've kind of got, um, in, in my eyes, you've got, two par- you've got parallel approaches going on. You've got the long-term strategy, which is getting ready with the big influencer push, the big traffic push, essentially. And then you've got the short-term strategy, um, which, as in, I don't mean you're thinking both short-term and long-term, I mean, everything's thinking long-term, but you've got the stuff you're doing immediately and the stuff that will be going live probably for Christmas 2016. Yeah. Um, and the short, the, that shorter lifespan project is, right, we can go live in November, we've got Christmas coming up. What does Christmas mean? Christmas means big volume or the biggest volume we're going to see in our first eight months of eight months or so of being live. So what do we want to learn from that volume? Right, let's keep everything else simple, as we've already discussed, and then we'll just learn as much as we can, and then we'll spend the start of 2016 working on that and developing what the customer wants, so then we'll be ready to have a fantastic 2016. That's the theory. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have to say, I, am, I think it was going to work very well for you because it's a very sensible and I would say pragmatic approach and I do like the efficient and effective approach to e-commerce it's way too easy to spend too much time doing things that aren't going to make any difference so in which case I think it would be a good time to move on to our top tips round and I love this section because it gives me and our listeners some really quick ideas just what I've been talking about for taking our business to the next level so Ian are you happy to go into the top tips yeah absolutely excellent so Our first book top tip of 2016. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off to read a book and make their business better, which book would you recommend? Apart from yours. (laughs) Thank you very much. (laughs) I think somebody's mentioned it before, but there's only really one really valuable book for me, and that's um, a book called The E-Myth. Oh, I love The E-Myth. Which is about automating your business. And that for me is something that anybody who's in a small business or, or maybe even a big business, but a small business particularly can learn from. And that, that's to kind of remove yourself from the business and try and automate as much as you possibly can. All right. So the traffic top tip. Which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? For us, I think, uh, and we've touched on it already, is this whole thing of customer service and, and referrals um, and upsells. You know, I would, I would far rather get business from the same people or people that they know than try and go and find strangers. It's a much easier way to get business so uh, I think for us offering that customer service so that somebody gets a really nice piece of beef has it at a dinner party and tells all their friends where they got it for me that's that's the easiest (laughs) (laughs) yeah so so we're looking to sell large joints uh, (laughs) into the right neighborhoods the tool top tip maybe a collaboration tool a social media plugin a phone app or just a way of working is there a cool little tool you use that makes you your team more efficient day to day there are two very quickly zapier is one that i found personally useful in that i I don't know if you're aware of it but it it connects together different apps a Uh, mind-boggling array of apps apps quite frankly yeah i love that one because again it's a way of automating things and Anything that automates things on the back end for me is, is a godsend. The other one that I really like that we've, we've only just started using just on the build up to Christmas was um, is it Zopin or Zopin? Oh, yes. Yeah, someone else recommended that last year. Uh, in that fact, that's probably where I came across it listening to one of your podcasts. <laughs> but it's the, um, you know, the instant chat and instant message thing. And it's just unbelievable. It works so well. And once you've identified somebody has, as being a visitor to the store and you know who they are, um, that then becomes logged. So the next time that they're on the site or chatting to you, you can bring up what you've said to them before or what they've ordered or all those kind of things. So it's a really good way of, of getting personal with, with customers and offering that service. But it's also a great way of, if somebody's got an immediate question before they buy or being able to answer it and um, and give them more information and maybe even upsell something you know um so i love that one yeah excellent two two great options uh so our startup top tip 
next then. If you met someone this weekend who's thinking of starting an e-commerce business, what would be your first tip for them? I think, depending on who they are, if there isn't an existing brand or, or something that they can use as, uh, as leverage, I think my tip would be to piggyback on something else first, you know, to maybe try on eBay or, or something like that and, and, and try and get some idea of, of whether the thing's going to fly or not. If they have got an existing brand and, and existing customers that they think e-commerce would be suitable for, then I'd go through our kind of get it wrong quickly approach, you know, jump in, do it and alter it if it's wrong. Um, so Masterplan World, you can find those top tips and links to everything else we've been chatting about in today's episode by going to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash 34. That's the number three and the number four. Uh, one final top tips question for you, Ian. If your business didn't exist, which e-commerce business would you like to be running? I think it would be Audible, purely because it ticks all the boxes for me. There's, the, there's no stock, it doesn't go off. And it's a subscription thing. To me, that kind of ticks all the right boxes for an e-commerce business. I love, I love the fact that you've, you've, you've outlined three boxes, two of which your your business is never going to tick. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's quite <laughs> funny. Grass is always greener. <laughs> um, so, Ian, before we say goodbye, would you like to let our listeners know where they can find you and your business on the web and social media? Yeah, well, tastetraditiondirect.co.uk is the, the website. We're still working on our social media thing, but we have native breed meat on Twitter. And that's it. We'll jump into Facebook when we're ready to... Um... Well, I'll add links to all of that and everything else we've talked about today in the show notes, which is a blog post, which you can find at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash three four, or just go to the website, click on the podcast tab or use the search box. Ian, thank you for being on the Ecommerce Masterplan podcast today and for being so generous sharing your experience with us. Well, thank you for having me. It's been great. Oh, what a great way to start the year it was with our interview with Ian there. Some great tips for him for anyone starting out in e-commerce. If you've been listening to our highlight shows and expert view shows over the past weeks, you will have picked up on a bit of a theme, one that's been continued with Ian's answers today. And that theme is the customer. In reaction to that, here at e-commerce master plan, we're dedicating 2016 to the customer. That means, first off, we're going to listen extra hard to what you, our customers, all want and do our best to provide the inspiration, insights and guidance that will help you make the right decisions to grow your business throughout this year and beyond because we've got to practice what we preach, right? And secondly, of course, and kind of centrally to this, we're going to be focusing on what we can put out there that's going to help you to build your business around your customers to maximise your success. So how you can look after your customer in order to help your business grow. That's going to include advice on everything from getting people to your website in the first place, so attracting them in with the right things, right the way through how you get the first order, how you get their email address, how you start your conversation with them, right the way through to repeat purchases and uh, subscriptions and more. So we're going to tackle it kind of stage by stage as we go through the process. Um, in terms of what content that's going to include, it's going to be blogs, podcasts, webinars, training courses, and a fair amount more yet to be revealed. The end of 2016 is a very long way away. And as we know, the world changes quite fast in this online sector. So I'm sure there'll be some interesting things we bring into the mix as we go through the year. From today, Monday 25th of January, until the end of March, our focus is going to be on the first part of the customer story, how to get their attention and how to start your conversation with them. So we're not going to be talking about sales yet. We'll be talking rather about building awareness and getting to know your customer because you have to do that before you can sell to them. I cannot wait to bring you all the great information we have lined up for you. If you want to find out more, just go to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash the customer or one word where we explain it all in more detail and where you'll also be able to find links to all the relevant information as we put it live. Have a great week, everyone, and keep optimising. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com.